Hi everybody, this is Bonnie with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to crochet the Lavina poncho. Let me show you some better pictures right here. This particular design is on the cover of an older publication called Celtic Cable Crochet. And I've been asked to make this into a video by many, many people over the years. So I'm finally able to do that for you. And I hope you enjoy this one. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what you're going to need. But let me also be clear that the pattern is only available through the purchase of the book. I no longer own the copyright, so I'm not able to provide this for you as a single PDF. So thanks in advance for your understanding there. But I do have links for this. You can buy it both from my Etsy online store when available, as well as from Amazon. And the links are in the video description below. Well, let's go ahead and get started. For this project, I'm going to be using Lion Brand's Heartland yarn. Of course, they have many different colors and I'm gonna use a slightly different color than the one shown on the book cover. Uh, this is called Bryce Canyon. And each of these balls of yarn has 251 yards or 230 meter. Each of them is five ounces or 142 grams. This is 100% acrylic. It is a number four or medium weight yarn, but please feel free to use whatever yarn you prefer of this particular size. For this project, I I'm going to be using a size K or 10.5 or 6.50 millimeter crochet hook, but feel free to adjust this size in order for you to meet gauge. To begin, we're going to start with a slip knot and a starting chain of 64 chains. For row one, we're going to start with a double crochet in the fourth chain from hook and we're going to double crochet in each of the remaining chains across until you have a total of 62 double crochets. And just for the record, the turning chain does count as a stitch in the stitch count in this particular design. Now before I get into the next rows, let me just go ahead and cast a little bit of a vision for where we're headed with this. Okay, and this is a big uh, fluffy project to get into this small light box, but I think this will help you better understand. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a, a column here of just front post double crochets or back post double crochets. That's what all of these, these different columns are. And then we're going to work a four post cable, then another just single column. And then we're gonna work two sets of the honeycomb cable. And then again, bordered with this line of two front or back post double crochets, depending on if the front side or the back side is facing. And then we're gonna work the wheat cable, just one of those. And then we're going to have two more columns of the post stitches and then two more side by side honeycombs or two repeats of the honeycomb cable. And again, uh, this is all symmetrical. One of the post stitches and then a four post cable and then a post stitch and then we're at the end of the row. So I just wanted to give you a picture of that because otherwise all these crossing here and there and not here and not there is going to just sound like a bunch of gibberish. But this is the foundation row that we're going to be working for these cables. So um, just kind of stick with me for the first, really the next four 
to five rows. And once you complete those, then we're just going to repeat the five or, or the four, uh, four rows for the rest of the pattern. So let me go ahead and we can, we can start row two. So this is what you should have after completing the first row. Now we're going to turn. We are going to chain two, one, two. We're going to front post, not in the first stitch, and that's the end stitch, but in the next stitch we're going to front post double crochet. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches. This is working the four post cable, and we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped, starting with the one, that, which is the first one that we skipped. And that's pretty much the way with all the cables when you work in front or behind. You always work with the first stitch that was skipped and then the ones after that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is another front post double crochet. So this is what we have so far. After we do that, we are going to work the honeycomb cable. And again, to do that, it's an, um, it's an eight stitch repeat. We're going to skip these two stitches. And again, front post, treble, in the next two stitches. Okay, after that, we're going to be working behind these two stitches and we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. So let's go ahead and do the first stitch that we skipped. And let me do that a little more slowly the next, for the next one. And we're going to work this one. We're going to come into the hole here and I am going to locate the stitch with my thumb and finger which is right here, which is the second stitch. And you can pull this down in the front those first two stitches that we worked. And then we work behind the stitch just like that. They are front post trebles, but they're worked behind these two. Now for the next part of this honeycomb cable, we're going to skip the next two stitches, front post, treble, and the next two stitches. Now this is the easier part of this, working in front of these two stitches, just like we did over here with the four post cable. We work front post trebles in front of those last two, last two stitches that we just worked. Okay, so that is really the completion of row one of the honeycomb. So let's go ahead and do that again because we do have a pair of the honeycombs. Skip the next two stitches. Front post treble in each of the next two stitches. So now working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two that we just skipped, just like we did before. I'm going to come in behind and the first stitch is right here. So go ahead and guide your hook. You can pull these two down in the front so that you can see where you're working these stitches. And we're going to do that again to the stitch right beside it right here. Come back into the back and locate the stitch and complete that front post treble. And now for the second half of this, skip the next two stitches, front post treble, and the next two stitches. And working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble into the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, so I'm going to take a pause 
and I want you to see how how these stitches you can see these big V's created which is the bottom part of a honeycomb it goes down and then up and then it goes down and then up again and this will be more defined uh, the further we go into this particular project so after we complete that honeycomb we're going to work a back post double crochet followed by two front post double crochets and one back post double crochet and now we're going to work the wheat cable which just so happens to be the same as row one of the honeycomb so let's go ahead and skip the next two stitches front post treble in the next two stitches now working behind those two stitches just like we've done twice already in this row we're going to come in to the back hole there and start with this stitch and work a front post treble take these slow at first I know this is an awkward uh, way to make a stitch okay then we're going to do that again to the next stitch right here and again you can always pull this first two stitches down in front so that you can see what you're working on and then we're going to skip the next two stitches one two and front post treble in those next two stitches and then working in front of those last two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped make sure we get through all the strands of this yarn after we do that we're going to work a back post double crochet in the next stitch and then two front post double crochets um, one way you can remember which you are actually working is whenever you're crossing cables we're using trebles um, when we're not crossing cables we're generally looking at working posts just double crochets front or back post double crochets okay so so after that beginning of the wheat stitch which by the way is only a two row repeat where the honeycombs are going to be four row repeats so they are going to look distinctively different so just to review after the wheat foundation we're going to work a back post two front posts double crochet and a back post double crochet now we're going to mirror what we've already worked on the other side which is the two honeycombs and the four post cable so I will work this again with you skip the next the next two stitches and we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches working behind these last two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped again this is the fourth time that we're doing this in this particular row and then we're going to come and do that second stitch right beside it with a front post treble and then again skip the next two stitches front post treble in the next two stitches working in front of those last two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped and after I get some more yarn here we're going to do this one more time skip the next two stitches front post treble in the next two stitches working behind those last two stitches we front post treble in the two skipped stitches again 
coming into that hole, locating that stitch, and then working that front post treble, and then skip the next two stitches, front post treble, and the next two. Working in front of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in those two stitches that we skipped. And then I'm going to pause here. And you can see the two foundations down, then up, down, then up. And it's always good to check to make sure that they're going in the direction you wish them to be for those two honeycomb cables. And now we have a front post double crochet and then we're going to work the four post cable skip the next two stitches front post treble in each of the next two stitches working in front of those last two stitches we front post treble in the two skipped stitches I know I sound like a broken record for those of you who are old enough to understand that phrase, um, but that's just part of the teaching. I promise not every row is going to be like this. It's going to lighten up considerably after the next four rows. After that, we're going to work a front post, double crochet, and then a half double worked into that turning chain. So let's pause and take a look at what we have. So just for a quick review, we have the four post cable, two, two honeycomb foundations, and those two, actually it's a series of four stitches, back post, two front posts, one back post, and those are double crochets. And then we have the wheat stitch with the back post double, front post double, front post double, back post double. And then we have the two honeycombs, front post double, four post cable, front post double, and a half double crochet. Now for row three, I've turned my work. We're going to chain two. We are going to skip the first stitch. We're going to work a back post double crochet over many of these stitches. Over the first one, we're going to work four more back post double crochets just straight across after this row or after this four post cable, I should say. There we go. Do make sure that you have four stitches, four back post doubles. Okay, now we're gonna work one more back post double. This is the one, let me show you, that's going to be kind of a, a divider line between the four post cable and the honeycomb. Now we're going to work eight back post double crochets over each of these honeycombs. Or, yeah, four for each side. And I'll show this to you in a bit. So we're just working straight back post double crochet. We're not crossing any cables, so we're using the shorter uh, back post double crochet. Okay. And that was the back side of one honeycomb. And let's do eight more stitches for the next honeycomb. sure you get them all okay after that we have a post stitch make a front post double crochet we have two back post double crochets so you basically crochet what you see if you if you see back post you do back post and this is presenting as a front post on this row, so we work a front post. So this is, let me show you the back, where you had those two um, 
post stitches kind of helping to make a, a barrier between the wheat and the honeycomb so when we worked it with the front side facing you had back post two front post one back post now with the back side facing you end up working a front post double crochet two back post double crochets and one front post double crochet now we work over eight back post doubles over the wheat stitch this is right in the center try that stitch again there we go even I can have problems with yarn once in a while okay So I've worked eight back post double crochets over that central wheat cable. Now we come again, front post, two back post, and front post. These are all double crochet post stitches. Now to finish out the row, I'm just going to do this with you. I could talk you through it, but I'm going to work it with you. I'm going to just work back post double crochets over the next 16 stitches. This is the honeycomb with the back side facing us. So that's four. And let's do the next four. Now I also wanted to let you know that if I'm going too fast for you or even too slow for you, I have a cure for you. You can actually change the speed of these videos by looking down here. You may have to stop the video and there's a little gear, little gear shaped icon. If you click on that, it will bring up the playback speed and then you can select either slower speeds at varying rates or faster speeds. So hopefully that will serve you so that you can learn these stitches well. And if you're absolutely bored to tears at this point, um, you can speed it up as well. <laughs> so I hope that that helps you. And this is both for my YouTube platform and my paid subscriber platform on my watch channel, which I encourage everybody to check out if they haven't yet. Lots of great stuff there. Okay, so worked those 16 back post double crochets and then we have one more back post double crochet which is that standalone border stitch we have four more over the four post cable okay and then we're down to the last two stitches of the row we work a back post double crochet followed by a half double worked into the turning chain so this is the back side which doesn't look like a whole lot and this is the front side now i think you'll see these stitches are starting to come together and you can see more definition on the honeycomb and the wheat although they look the same right now so so that's what we have after three completed rows. Now for the fourth row, we're going to chain two. We're going to work a front post double crochet in that first stitch. And a lot of what I'm going to do at this point is going to be review for you. It's going to be pretty much the same, but I'm going to go ahead and work these stitches, uh, these rows completely just so that there are no questions as to what you need to be doing. This is the four post cable. Skip two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, we come to that front post 
treble, sorry, double front post, double crochet in that first stitch. Now when we get to the honeycomb, it's going to be similar but yet different. And let me explain that before we actually do this. We worked behind these two stitches on this side, but now what we did over here where we worked in front, we're going to do it up here. And what we did down here working behind the stitches, we're going to do it up on the other side. And it's going to form kind of a honeycomb box for us. So let's go ahead and do that. Skip the next two stitches and front post treble in the next two stitches. Now working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. On the other side, skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. Now we're working behind these two stitches. We're going to front post treble in the two stitches here that we skip. So we come back in to that hole. We locate that first stitch, which is right here. And we work a front post treble. And do that again in the next stitch. Okay, so I'm going to pause a second here. And so you can see how it forms like a little a little uh, box here. Now as you go through this row, you always want to make sure that you do a quick visual check. And this is going to be very helpful on repeats. Always check to make sure that these cables are going in the direction that you want them to go in. So we have the completed honeycomb and we're going to do another one. Skip the next two stitches front post treble in the next two stitches, working in front of these two stitches. Remember we want to close this in on this side. We work front post trebles in those two stitches that we just skipped. And then we're going to skip the next two stitches, front post treble, in the next two stitches, working behind these two stitches, we're going to come in to the back and front post treble in these two stitches that we just skipped. And like I said, you can always pull these two stitches down in front so that you can see where you are working. That's the second of these two stitches. Let's go ahead and pause. And now you can see, yes, we do have two honeycombs there. All right, now we go to the back post, double crochet, don't, don't forget these stitches back here. And then two front post double crochets. And then another back post double crochet. And then now we come to the wheat stitch. Remember I said this was a two row repeat. And so we're just going to work row one um, of the wheat stitch, which is skip the next two stitches, front post, treble in the next two. Yeah, there's a lot of that in this project. Now working behind these two stitches, we're going to do the same thing that we did here. We're going to work behind those two stitches and we're going to front post treble. And you'll see what this looks like as soon as I finish working this for you. And then we skip the next two stitches and we front post treble in the next two. Working in front of these two stitches, we front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. And 
I'm going to work the next four stitches. This is a back post, double crochet, and you can feel those stitches with your fingers on, or at least the, uh, the tall man finger can can identify these stitches on the back side. So hopefully that'll help you to not skip those when we get to them. So we're working two front post doubles and a back post. All right, so I'm going to take another pause and we're going to look at these stitches carefully so that you'll see the difference. This is the weave cable. You see one goes this direction, one goes this direction, and that's going to be throughout both panels. Now the honeycomb, you see how they open up and they close. So they're going to open and then close. So you're going to be forming these honeycomb shaped boxes all the way up on this side. And the four posts are just going to stay continuous. This is a two row repeat working, you know, crossing in the front and then working those back posts, double crochets, crossing in the front back posts, just over and over and over again. And the same with these, these um, post stitches, they're always going to be worked the same um, as you work the project. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this out with you again. Skip the next two stitches. Front post treble in the next two. Working in front of those two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches we skipped. Again, we're working the honeycomb on the other side so that this is symmetrical. Skip the next two stitches. Front post treble in the next two stitches. Now working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in this stitch and in this stitch. Again, coming in the window from behind and work those front post trebles. And then we have another honeycomb. Skip the next two. Front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches. Front post treble in the next two stitches. Skip the next two. Front post treble in the next two stitches. Working behind those stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And we are close to being done at this point with this row. Front post, double crochet in the next stitch. Skip the next two stitches and we're doing a front post, or actually four post cable. And you can see the similarities in the way either each of these stitches are worked. Working in front of those two, we just cross in front and front post in those two stitches. Front post, double crochet in the next stitch and then half double in that turning chain. So let's stop and take a look. Again, going from left to right, it's the same, rather what direction you go from because they this is symmetrical. Four post cable, honeycomb, honeycomb, wheat cable, honeycomb, honeycomb, and the four post cable. All right, let's go on to the next row. This is row number uh, five, which is an exact repeat of row number three. But I'll go ahead and do a little bit of this with you and then I'll explain the rest. Back post, double crochet. Again, we're not working in the end stitches. We always skip the end stitches and we go right into the next stitch. I'm going to work four back post, double crochets over that four post cable. And then don't forget that next back post double crochet. 
So let me just talk you through the rest of this. So, um, so looking at the back side, we're going to work 16 back post cables. Okay, eight and then eight. So there'll be 16 of these back post double crochets over those two honeycombs. Then we're going to do a front post, two back post, a front post, and then eight more back post double crochets, and then a front post, two back post, a front post, and then back post double crochets over the next 16 stitches. And then we have a back post in between where the honeycombs and the four post cables are. So one here, four more over that four post cable, one more here, and then a half double crochet worked into the turning chain. So go ahead and work that row. This is what you should have after completing the first five rows. So now the assignment is to work rows 6 through 69, which is repeating rows 2, that's where the first cable crossings began, rows 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we're going to repeat those a total of 16 times more. And once you finish that, you'll be able to count the diamonds on each side the, that will be vertical. Um, there will be 17 sets of these going vertically. So that would be one way to know that you are almost ready to work the perimeter round. So go ahead and work row 6 through 69. If you need stitch support, look across the bottom of the screen. I'll be sure to add in a time mark where you can go back and re-watch rows 2 through 5 should you need them. This is what you should have after completing those 69 rows. And like I mentioned before, if you're counting the honeycombs, count not the one in the middle, but count one of these two on either side. And if you count each of these, you should have a total of 17 completed honeycombs. All right, so now we are ready to work our perimeter round. I'm going to hang on to the same crochet hook. Okay. We're going to chain one and we are going to work 61 single crochets across. So go ahead and work those stitches. So after working these all the way across with those 61 single crochets, which is relatively easy because you're just putting one stitch in each stitch. Now we're going to turn 90 degrees and we're going to work along the row ends. And we go ahead and do a chain two corner, one, two, and I'm going to put a single crochet in that same place as the last to form that corner. Let me also show what I've also done. Because what we're going to do now is we're not going to work one stitch or even two stitches per row end. It's going to be a little different than that. We're going to work 112 stitches evenly across this long end. Now, in order to do that evenly, you can just, um, you know, haphazardly guess at this, but I don't like to spend a lot of time guessing. So what I've done is I've used these little knit clips, or you could just use pieces of yarn or even um, stitch markers. And I've marked this panel. It's hard to see it all at once, but I've divided it evenly into fourths. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do a simple math problem. I'm going to take 112 and divide it by 4, and that should give you... 28 if I'm doing my math properly. Okay, I just wanted to verify. Um, yes, I am thinking properly with my math this morning. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to work 28 stitches, and that's counting the first one that I just made here for the part of that corner, and I'm going to work 28 stitches evenly until I get to this point. 
and then I will do that again between this point and this point because 28 stitches is easy to deal with and if I have to rip out 28 stitches it's not as big a deal as 112 stitches if that makes sense so I'm going to go ahead and work this evenly across um, again it is divided into fourths and so I will work 28 stitches in each quarter which will give me 112 stitches evenly spread across the length of this panel and I'll just go ahead and, and get started. So I'm going to just work maybe one here and perhaps two stitches in the next row end and then one in the next, etc. It's not going to be just an even two here and one there. It's going to be a, a matter of mixing it up some. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what I have once I complete the entire side. So this is what it looks like after you've worked those single crochets. That's 112 stitches evenly along the long sides. And yes, using stitch markers are a way to mark off one fourth of the panel as you go saved me so much time. So I would highly encourage you to do that. I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to begin working across the foundation row by working single crochets in each stitch and you can see I'm going to be covering up those two strands that we did not crochet into when we worked the turning chain and this is one reason why I generally don't like using the foundation crochet I like using old-fashioned chains for my projects because I have less bulk to have to cover up with this perimeter round and as long as I crocheted that beginning chain with a reasonable normal to loose tension it's not going to be a problem so go ahead and work these 61 single crochets across the foundation edge and once you finish that we're going to chain two and turn again and then working along the other row ends work 112 single crochets around after working those 112 stitches evenly along the row ends, I'm going to chain two and I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that very first single crochet of the round. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a chain and a tug. And let me go ahead and find my scissors. Here we go. Here we go. And I'm going to cut a nice long strand and pull that on through and pull a little bit tight. So now we have one panel completed. So all I have to do now is do it again. Do a second panel and then once I complete that I will show you how to put these together and work the finishing ribbed collar and ribbed um, trim along the bottom. So now I have placed the panels together in this position I'm going to go in a little bit closer to show you this is the seam that we're going to connect. Of course, when we connect them, we're going to put the front sides facing one another. And I'm just going to tell you what you need to do here, because I think if you've gotten this far, you don't need me to demonstrate this. We're going to join with a slip stitch through the chain two corners right here. And we're just going to slip stitch these together, matching it stitch by stitch until you've gone over these 61, 61 stitches and I would end, actually it's gonna be um, probably more like 63 because we're starting in the chain twos and we're gonna end with the chain two corner here, slip stitching that to the appropriate stitch on the other side. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip that back. And then after we do that, let me show you what we're going to do. There is a diagram in the book, but I think this might be a little more helpful. So now this section, is going to fold under like this and this long portion here is also going to fold under. So I have this section folded under and then this section I folded it under here and I'm going to just bring this up so it's clear and then so now this section we're going to also slip stitch starting in the chain two corners and then slip stitch 
those 61 stitches up the other side. Okay, again, with the, the front sides facing together. Now, one thing that I have that's very helpful in joining these two as you stitch is these little knit clips. They're not something you have to run out and buy, but you can easily join the sections that you want to join um, just by putting these through the, the material. It's a lot easier and I think safer than using pins, but um, either way, this is just an option. So once you've done that and you've connected those, your poncho, when connected, will look like this. Of course, it will be nicer because it'll be all stitched together. And I'll show that to you once I complete this step. After connecting the two panels, your poncho should look something like this. I bet don't worry, it's gonna look a lot better once we finish the edging. So now we're ready to work the collar all the way around. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna join where these were joined. So this is gonna be one of the joints. You just pick one, it really doesn't matter since both sides are really symmetrical. And we're just going to make a slip knot. We're gonna to join to our work. Okay. With the chain three, I'm going to pull that first chain a little tighter. Two, three. And for the record, this chain three does count as a double crochet in the stitch count. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to work a double crochet in the same space as joining. And we're going to work 102 double crochets evenly all the way around the neck. So all the way around. So go ahead and do that. And then I will show you the rest of the rounds after that. So just make sure that you're counting evenly. Um, and, and if you need to add additional stitches or fewer stitches according to the stitches that were already worked along the edge, you can just add those in by putting two into one stitch or, um, yeah, that should probably be all that you need to do. Um, but I'll go ahead and work this around, and then I'll show you what I have. All right, I've worked this all the way around. And just to let you know, the stitch count of 102, that's including the chain three at the beginning. Um, you know, if you worked a couple of extra or a couple of few around this, don't sweat it. I would th I think it's more important that you just have stitches looking evenly around. And at full disclosure, I did work 104 stitches instead of 102. And honestly, that is not going to be um, that big of a deal. Okay. So I just wanted to let you relax a little bit about that. Go ahead and join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. And now I'm going to begin the remaining rows. So for rows two through 10, they're all going to be worked the same with a chain two at the beginning. And we are working just standard post ribbing. And we work that with a front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. And we work that all the way around. Front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. So we're going to work that all the way around. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first double crochet of the round. I would not work a post around this stitch. Just just let your last stitch, uh, last post stitch be the double crochet. Okay, and then after you chain two at the end of this round, after you join and chain two, then we're just going to repeat that again. Front post over the front post, back post over the back post, all the way around. So go ahead and work rounds two through ten. After working this all the way around, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. Give it a chain and a tug and then clip the strand, leaving a nice long strand for hiding. And um, let's take a look at this beautiful collar. Okay, so now it's time to work the bottom ribbing. So now we're ready to join for the bottom ribbing and join anywhere 
along any of the sides, but do not join in the chain two corner because we're going to do something a little bit different when we get to that place. So I'm going to join with that slip knot, a chain two, which does not count as a stitch. And I'm going to go ahead and double crochet in that same stitch as joining and go ahead and work double crochets in each stitch until you get to the chain two corner. Once you come to the chain two corner, and there are only going to be two of these, um, one at each point on the poncho, we're going to work six double crochets into that same space. Okay, so we have six stitches there, and then we go back to just working one in all the other stitches. So go ahead and work one double crochet in all the stitches until the next chain two corner, and then again, work those six stitches into that chain two corner. At the end of round one, we're gonna join with a slip stitch with the first stitch of the round, just like that. And we're going to chain two and for rounds two through five, they are all going to be the same. We're just going to work front post in the first stitch, back post in the next, and we're just going to alternate that all the way around. And when you get to the corners, you don't have to do anything different. You're just going to work, you know, front post, back post, alternating all the way around. And when you get to the end of the round, we're going to join with a slip stitch again in the first stitch of the round, chain two, and just continue, um, fasten off at the end of five rounds. Now, when you work these, make sure you work front post over the front post, back post over the back post. You don't need to turn at the end of the rounds. Just work, just work straight around like we've been doing with the front side facing. So go ahead and work those five rounds and then after you do that go ahead and get your trusty yarn needle and hide all those loose ends. Well I hope you enjoyed crocheting the Lavina poncho with me today. If you did I would certainly love to hear from you. Please feel free to comment as always in the comment section below. God bless. Bye bye.